Hi everyone. Today I'm just doing my follow-up session with Steffi. So Steffi, um, how has it been this week since I typed you LII? Have you had any further thoughts or reflections on that typing? Definitely, um, because I took some time, quite some time, in order to figure out if this fits or not. And yep. because I, yeah, I care about it. And um, also I dived a little bit deeper into model A from Socionics. I don't know much about model G, but like at least I want to understand the theory behind it as well. So I can kind of see how I fit into that. Okay. That was fun. What? Well, just to, just for the sake of my curiosity, were there any differences or, um, or big similarities you found looking at LII in one model compared to another? I, mm, I I think I just watched one video of Model G where um, of LII. I think it was more about the difference between LII and EII. It was from Ben Vaseline. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, but they kind of talked a little bit more about EII instead of LII. And okay. Uh, so this wasn't helpful for me at least but it was still interesting <laughs> and um but from model a um it just kind of made more sense at least for now yeah I, I can't really say much about the comparison at least uh, at least now yeah okay that's fine um were there any further questions or things you wanted to ask me yeah um i actually wrote some down <laughs> Okay. Um, I just want to see. There's definitely one question I had, and um, how confident are you after the typing session that you think we can see clearly some patterns, or um, this was really strong argument for it, and so on? Like, were there any any strong arguments uh, that you would say? We can say for sure, or are you? Do you have some questions that we're like, hmm? I think I'm around eighty percent sure. Hmm. I think eighty. Okay. Like, yeah. No, I, I I remember when we were going through, remembering the interview last week. I just think everything seemed to match up and make sense. You're clearly a very intellectually focused person. Yeah. Very interested in that. There was. I remember we had that slight difficulty in the beginning figuring out the scope of your extroverted intuition in relation yeah. to your introverted logic. And we're just trying to figure out, you know, what was really deciding your making the decisions for you. And eventually it made sense for you sort of building a puzzle of a yeah. world of human development. And and that I think that makes the most sense, especially if you look at other aspects of you, for instance, the social anxiety side. Yeah. And thinking, okay, does that make sense for an IE? Well, not necessarily in the way you described it, not necessarily in the way of sort of need for more positive emotionality, need to feel more included and accepted. It wasn't, um, it didn't make sense as extroverted ethics being a demonstrative function, for instance. So eventually I had to think, okay, what made more sense? That you were putting together a puzzle rather than just aimlessly collecting lots of different possibilities and ways of viewing different things in different contexts. Yeah. So that structure made sense. Your analytical side also was quite pronounced. So overall, I think, yeah, I think LI makes the most sense, unless there's something which I've substantially misunderstood from the interview. Which. Yeah, I was reflecting on the two, and I have to stay. Uh, I say that I still stand on what I said there, and um, yeah, it's um, the only question. Or like, um, I noticed that maybe it was a little bit too, but I don't know. Um, a little bit too. Um, how do you say it? Um. It was it just went a little bit more in this direction too much maybe that at at some point I kind of um, just talked about this aspect and I did.
didn't really yeah, yeah. Like ex for example we didn't yeah. talk about te stuff or at, at yeah. least how it um might fit into the type of me <laughs> so why don't you tell me a bit more about a extroverted logic for you what do you think extrovert logic is about um yeah that's what i was uh, talking about to other mm. people as well because um like um i compared many many different uh, different definitions of it and i tried to figure out what the essence of it is at least and um i noticed that it's like people um relate to te this uh, pragmatism and such like i noticed this in your definition um not definition but like uh, type yeah. descriptions as well and um pragmatism is definitely a good way to uh get the essence of it but maybe yeah. it can be misleading um, misleading to some people who would think that te just cares about um getting things done or maybe it's like s-e-t-e -E stuff like it depends on how you maybe. what your agenda is maybe but um i think many people could mislead it as like you want to get things done as efficient as possible mm. and doesn't care about systems so much and that's where i would say no i think ti and t have different approaches to systems or define um failure of systems differently and um mm. that's where i try to figure out what failure means to me this is something um i care a lot that i won't um i won't understand something in an incorrect way and that how i behave in society or whatever that i don't misbehave and such that's something what, what i would consider as failure too and mm. for for example yeah this is a good example um my mistyping journey <laughs> or my type jumping journey um i i really had the fear that I would misunderstand something or like miss in principle that would really um, make me sure of I'm really this type now. I kind of um, missed that on uh, certain points that I thought, okay, this is a really strong argument now and actually no. So um, I, the system is kind of difficult to apply on me. Like I can't, that's why I need kind of some support. Like, um, when I have to type other people, I used to do that for Enneagram at least. And um, that's where that's what I found easy since I know knew the steps and yeah, I just do this. But I suddenly when it comes to me, I'm kind of blank and I don't know how to proceed anymore. And that's what I consider as failure too. Yeah, like for TE, for, as it, for me, it's with TE that I, um, uh, how would I say it? Um, I reduce the possibility of me failing. Yeah. I think that's what I care about. Let, let, like I notice that when it comes in my consciousness that um, for me, it's about failure and that I, um, want to be seen as competent in what I'm doing. And yeah, that's okay. why I noticed TE in myself. What well, can I just say, because Ina Danthrax wants to do Q&A. Yes, feel, guys, feel free to ask some questions. We'll get to them once we finished our one-to-one our -one discussion. We'll move towards more Q&A. So feel free to ask some questions and build up a backlog to get through uh, later in this hour. Um, but yeah, Steffi, what you're, it's interesting what you said there about failure being more about misbehaving. I thought that mm -hmm. was an interesting thing, and perhaps more in regards to extroverted ethics, if anything, and it's interaction. Oh, yeah. I would say how extroverted logic and introverted logic will approach a system is that introverted logic is far more about 
the purity of the system more mm -hmm. about it, all the structures making it up of a each conveying something which is very clear very consistent with one another that the system is ele elegantly put together and that that sort of emphasis is very important for them mm -hmm. whereas for extroverted logic i think they're far less respectful towards the systems where it's yeah, more yeah. About what what is what is working what isn't working how can we chop and change this to make it work better and yeah, pretty situational i guess yes exactly and so when it comes from one situation to the next is that system working no okay just one more tool just to put it back in our toolbox and try out a different tool and use that instead so they're far far less um they treat they treat each system with far less sanctity you could say than introverted logic types will mm -hmm. and i wouldn't say that extroverted logic is again all about just what the results are either i think there is some aspect of um there is an element of sanctity to extroverted logic as a sanctity of the information itself rather than how it's systemized and the idea yeah. that they need to convey information as accurately as they can and that means far longer explanations of how things work what the different facts making it up may be even if as a result presenting all the data can mean a far messier picture where it's far hard to pick out what the underlying rules and norms are I find mm -hmm. for introverted logic types, they don't treat the information with as much sanctity as how the information can be arranged in a system, systemic sort of way. Okay. That's one of the reasons why I'd called um, the types which value extroverted logic integrity seeking, whereas the, the type yeah. of introverted logic clarity seeking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where I also like since i um got to know socionics um it was like at first the the first thing that was clear to me is that i am never a beta a beta or how you pronounce it wow. um and and then i was thinking alpha but i i never saw myself as a logical type because mm -hmm. i always um <laughs> I, w I wasn't seeing myself neither as logical nor um, ethical, kind of, because, um, well, I don't know. Um, mm. I was kind of insecure about my logicalness. W what did you see as logicalness? Um, that I always have this clear mind and I always know how to precisely say something and convey uh, precisely what I'm constructing in my head and um, this kind of thing. Mm. But also, um, like, I think I got some things wrong. And mm. but that's just what I was thinking about two years ago, somehow, mm. um, that, yeah, I must be perceived as logical too by my environment that like the the relation between how i see myself and how others see me i try to um, mm. find the middle ground there and i know that people didn't see me as logical or at least not logical but um they just saw one uh, saw one side of me the um that i can become quite um, I'm talking about my school environment here and um, I know that my fellow students definitely said that the thoughts that I share in the um, lessons are quite unique. Um, they Some valued it and some just thought, okay, she's mm. so in her head and this is actually not interesting. Why is she doing the intellectual stuff and so on. Like, why does she care so much about uh, whether the teacher said it in a correct way or not? Like, I was kind of mm. correcting teachers a lot. And, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, but people saw more the side of me, like when we 
went out of classrooms and such that I was quite emotional in a way that I was frustrated a lot, angry a lot, um, mm. bad emotions they saw in me. But also that I can entertain people, but not that I wanted to entertain them. It was just either how I said it or that I said it in such a dry monotone tone <laughs> that uh, people were just laughing about what i was yeah. saying although i wasn't it wasn't a joke <laughs> like uh, um, and uh, <laughs> yeah I, I, I think um oh and also the way that i laugh um people kind of laugh about my laughing and uh they perceived me like that but many people were also like wow she has a lot of unique ideas and a lot of uh, a unique perspective and I cared so much about getting um, the degree or like um, that I graduate just because I can go to university. Um, I was so far-sighted uh, in a way that um, <sighs> school was just really a means to an end for me and I treated it like that and I tried to kind of find a way to um, make it a funny place at least I, I didn't want it to like that's where i contributed a little bit that um people don't see school as something serious or too serious at least that grades are just grades um it doesn't tell you anything about your intelligence at least not in a way that um I think the only thing you really learn is how to say it in a way that the teacher will say, oh, yes, that's right. And that's just the only thing. I barely noticed teachers who were, were really into the subject in a way that they cared mm. to convey, it, convey whatever in a precisely way. And yeah. yeah. I suppose that's interesting because you didn't feel that you yourself were quite precise enough. But you were very particular about how precise other people were being in their conveying of information. So it might be that your standards of precision were very high. Your my, my what? It might have been that your standards of precision and articulation were very high. Yeah, I mean, um, I tried to figure out how to be precisely myself like i cared about it but i noticed that um <laughs> you know i was a bad student um, <laughs> that's like that's the most like that was my strongest argument that i can't be a logical type because i got bad grades although i try to um make up for them and such like i almost couldn't graduate even because um I was so bad at maths and right. uh, computer science. And that was like, yeah, okay, there you use TI a lot, right? And what, and I, I can't, I, like, what, I can't be logical. <laughs> what was it about the mathematics that you found difficult? Um, first of all, I couldn't really um, learn the basics because I was missing a lot in school and middle school. Right. I almost uh, lost one year, like um, it was like even this um, much that I missed uh, that teacher were th teachers were thinking, OK, maybe she should um, repeat one school year because she missed too much. And that's where I was missing a lot on um, algebra basics. I think the, the eighth and ninth grade were really bad for me where I missed a lot and there we also got introduced to chemics and uh, physics kind of and that's where I also was um, then pretty bad at and I didn't care about um... <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> this, this was a, a funny one um, I just cared a little bit of about physics that I get into it again just yeah. because I wanted to prove my teacher wrong. She said to me once in ninth grade when I came back uh, to school after I was three months away, mm. um, she said to me, um, you are never going to understand physics. You are never going to get a B instead of a D. And right. I was like, 
Ah, uh, okay, I prove you wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I said to her, if you let me, like, if you let me use my smartphone and uh, in the lessons where I can actually Google whenever I miss an, or like I don't understand something and work it out for myself, then I can prove you that I will get uh, that the last um, big grade that I will get is a B. And that's what I have got right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, I proved her wrong, yeah. and I had a B. Yeah. It's like the reason why you're struggling with these these lessons, which do very much depend on having a continuous build up of knowledge from the basis, which yeah. is very PI. Right. You need to learn this. You can't just start at the top. You need to have built up basics. But you weren't given those basics because you missed out that time in school. But once yeah. you had a Google, you were able to figure out those basics and the, the prior knowledge you need on your own terms and then you're able to do just as well as everyone else that strikes me as a very strong logic and it's yeah. even your approach to figuring out didn't you next level logic into their logic going through different definitions and trying to figure out what the essence is what is mm -hmm. the consistent pattern making up this what is the what are the key and core elements for defining his information elements? also strikes me very introverted logic we've also some extrovert intuition and in seeing a variety of different definitions and trying to synthesize yeah. the best in the best definition would be um yeah there are also some questions would you be interested in us answering some questions sure, sure. okay we got one from usanis who says i think you said that you care about being competent what does being competent mean for you mm. Mm. That I can use a tool in many different ways, in many different situations um, that I like don't, I'm not dependent on someone else or so that I can yeah, be an independent uh, worker. Yeah. Okay. Like also using the tools in many different ways. Like I don't want to evaluate, uh, re-evaluate again and again in every new situation. Okay, how do I use this tool? Like I just want to figure out um, how to generalize it, I guess. Mm. That's what I see as competent. That makes sense. Um, Emo Danthorak says, did you have to put those headphones online? Yeah, um, I can share an Amazon link, or I can just oh, say wait. that it's, wait a second, uh, Razer, that's the um, branch, branch, brand, 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 brand. brand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Razer it is, and you definitely find it on Amazon, you just have to scroll a little bit, and then you Razor. find it, if, um, the headphones and the cat ears are um, separately. You have to buy it in a, mm. another way. I can share the links. Okay. And so it's R E Z A. What, uh, what is the name? How do you, spell, you, the brand, how do you spell the brand name? Um, R A Z E R. Ah, raise. Um, I see. Yeah. Yeah, razor. Gotcha. Yeah, razor. Yeah, instead of not not the razor. You. <laughs> gotcha. uh, that. Okay, good. I just posted that. Okay, cool. Um, and here's one from Hippasia Nine. What's your dream job? I'm really excited about this question. Um, because I always thought that I want to be a therapist. I really cling to that idea since I was 11 years old. Um, but recently I figured out that I wouldn't be quite as good as a therapist probably. And um, that's why I actually chose something from the um, human sciences or in Germany, you have a really cool, a cool term for this um, specific field. Um, you call it more like, um, uh, first of all, the term is Geist, and you probably are familiar with Zeitgeist. I think that's a term you use in, yeah, yeah. and the Geist thing, <laughs> uh, 
uh, you call it basically geist sciences and that's um, about your um, rationale and uh, or about your mind and so on that's like the gist of it I guess and that's where I actually do uh, dove in and I dived in and um, yeah, and I want to uh, be a professor. That would be like my dream job. Um, I want to go into the research field and um, I'm quite working, uh, I'm really working hard for it. <laughs> the funny thing is um, I already made some um, good contacts who, who would lead me to like different contacts and uh, <laughs> would like help me with um, fun, not fundings, do you call it fundings, but at least that you get, um, wait a second, I kind of, scholarship, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like um, it's, I'm working hard for this as well that I get a scholarship so I can like it's kind of easier to go into the research field field instead of proving my ability to research in like um, pretty pretty good grades you know and um, that's definitely my dream sh uh, job and plan B is like becoming a librarian or some so sort that I can still deal with um, books and reading and research and information <laughs> yeah okay there's another one from emailed and threats would you mm -hmm. say you're an informative person in your communication style what is an inform like that i want to um talk like how do you say it um I think people learn. People can learn a lot from what you say. Oh, I definitely like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I definitely like that. I like to tell stories and kind of convey through that as well what I um, think is needed to know. And yeah, <laughs> I like to share a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's another one for me or the anthrax. What? <laughs> Did you about psychology? Was there a life event that sparked your interest? Definitely. Um, like my parents are both mentally ill and mm. I had to deal with that from a very young age that I tried to figure out how to approach them. And that's why I became kind of um, interested in psychology because I thought through that I will understand them better and um, adapt to them better. That's what I always thought with 11 and 12 and then I noticed okay I'm kind of suppressing or repressing my own emotions as well <laughs> and then I try to psychoanalyze myself again and again too and I don't know the, 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 the process behind it made me um, thinking I might enjoy this um, to study too, like the process of psychoanalyzing someone or, yeah. And yeah, but yeah, my parents basically inspired me and um, yeah, they they have to deal a lot with, uh, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, hmm, there's all the questions for the time being. Did you have any more questions for me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually read a really interesting article, and you can actually find it on Wikisocion too, mm -hmm. but really on the bottom of articles. And I think it was, did I found it? in a function article, I'm not quite sure now, but um, mm -hmm. it was about um, challenging the common understanding of the four Jungian dichotomies. Um, like, uh, they tried to challenge, I think there were two authors, they tried to challenge the way we think about intuition and feeling and thinking. And there I was really confused, like, did I also got it wrong? Uh, get it wrong? Mm -hmm. Like, um, 
it was about thinking and uh, feeling, or better to say, logic and ethics. And um, they said that the logical types actually just care about inanimated objects. Um, and because that was basically my question I had all along the week. Um, how can we define object? Like, what could object mean? Like, uh, TI wants to see the relationship between objects, and what can I fill in as this object? Can it be also different? Uh, can it be a person, even, that I could see as an object and not as a subject, maybe? that Those were the questions that I had in my mind. Um, because I'm really inter interested in, um, like, my, the topics <laughs> I'm interested in are pretty um, society-based and, um, yeah, even, like, that I want to study cultural studies and so on. Um, I'm interested in literature and such. I'm not interested in the natural sciences so much. Mm. And that's where I was like, hmm. Um, that was that. That made me a little bit confu uh, confused. Yeah. Yes, I think it's. I think it's not quite accurate. There is some attachment to people versus things. I I get why when we make that association, but I don't think that is the rule. I think mm. the rule is whether the information is based on something impersonal or personal yeah and yes if something is inanimate it's more likely to be impersonal whereas something to do with people it's more likely to be personal nonetheless myself as well i should say as a psychologist i work with people yeah true. But i am interested in the pl I, I am far better at managing the impersonal aspects of understanding yeah, me too. What are the certain rules? What are the um, norms? What are the categories we could put people in? What are the ways we can structure we can use to better understand people? Yeah. And actually, what I had to learn over time was more the personal aspect of actually feeling how someone else is feeling, um, trying to understand how to say something in a way which won't create an unwanted reaction in another person. And approaching people in a rather more mechanistic sort of way mm -hmm. and that's how i managed to get around that so i find people to be the most fascinating of machines that are out there the best things to be looking at and studying and getting to understand i think it's highly complicated systems so that i'd say is you know i'm dealing with people i'm not dealing with things but I'm taking a very much impersonal approach to people. And I'd imagine in your case in, in academia, you're looking at these repeating structures and yeah. these underlying rules uh, around people and how they've managed these different situations. It's not just about understand. Which is when, I take, when I was talking to an EII a while ago, and she did a lot in academia, she was trying to understand a certain group of people and their perspective on something. It wasn't drawing a general rule or trying to understand the underlying structure in terms of how people operate. It's more, let's listen to this group of people and their perspective, their subjective perception, a very personal aspect. Yeah. The idea was to personalize, not to impersonalize. I think that really is the rule. And yes, things like people versus things are good rules of thumb. They aren't. They aren't. Uh, they shouldn't replace the rule itself. Yeah. Um, in cultural studies, since it is a pretty new and interdisciplinary study um, mm. field, um, I see my strength that I can help a lot with uh, the theories. Um, they are uh, that the researchers are basing on their whatever they try to explain, like the basic basic of theories. Yes. rules you know that's mm. where i see my strength and that i can um help the study field that it actually becomes not a um <laughs> it gets criticized a lot even from the many historians and i study cultural studies and history and that's kind of cool to like 
uh, show the historians, no, they actually mm. have a good claim here. They actually have, they, they are basing it on this and this, and you can't really argue against it because it's kind of self-evident, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, that's where I see my strength. I kind of want to help the study field because I care a lot about, um, getting many perspectives together and that we all share a common ground on to communicate and socialize and so on. Yeah, that's where I see um, the potential of cultural studies that they can contribute mm. a lot to the common ground where we can, yeah, live our life on as a society. And um, yeah, it's just, um, it makes me happy to think about like, that I could contribute it, uh, contribute to cultural studies in the future. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that, yeah, makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I think that's very much more of the logical side rather than just the purely ethical side. Um, okay. Um, there are, there's a, there's a couple more questions. Let's see. Nice. Um, has your have your studies helped you in other areas? Would you recommend this for others to study and understand psychology? Um, well, for me, it definitely helps. Um, I, I I don't know. I think many. I think people can. Um, uh, it has many usages to mm. study it and really you really have to figure out for yourself how it can contribute to how you can understand your life better or your position your role whatever like um there are many many different feel uh perspectives like and how you can approach it for me it's just um <clears throat> um connecting things together and um, seeing how it affects each other the like whatever i'm looking at and um yeah understanding that's like like i get a lot of clarity because when yeah when I, for example i had to deal with my parents it wasn't really a good advice from others to um say to me like just listen to your gut or to your feeling or to your heart that you like when it came to like setting boundaries and such uh mm. i kind of needed a formula oh. for it or i don't know i'm just very quickly gonna go and plug in my computer i'll be right back but feel okay. free to continue answering the question sorry okay. <laughs> um yeah and uh, i kind of needed a formula for it instead of like listen to your heart if this person doesn't let you feel good then uh, move on or whatever you know kind of uh, that's where the studies help me a lot to deal with other people too um too when i'm kind of confused and um would you recommend this for others to study um Definitely, like um, if you kind of see clarity in any aspect that the study field covers, I would definitely recommend to study it. Or at least, like what I definitely re would recommend is to get um, books about the study field, like introductory books, um, so you actually know what you're dealing with in the end. And then you can, like, that's what I actually did, um, that I bought introductory books to the study fields in order to see the differences between study fields, because sometimes it can be quite wishy-washy, <laughs> like you don't know um, where it, differenti it differentiates from another study field, and that's where those introductory books can help a lot. And understand psychology, um, yeah, okay, that's this kind of connected to the question. Oops. <laughs> uh, I hope I kind of answered the question. I think so. I mean, I caught uh, the first part of it. Um, okay. Um, let me see. Ah, I emailed Dan for asking me a question. <laughs> that's cheeky. you got to wait for my Q&As to ask me questions. Oh, no, no, no. Um, here's one from... It was more attached to this follow-up session. How unlikely is Eileen? Why? 
So that's what I, I what I would like to ask you too. That's good. Yes. So I can see ILE making a lot of sense in terms of Alpha NT, but the main marking points between ILE and LII, the most obvious one is going to be about introverted sensation versus extroverted ethics. Hmm. And in the interview, we found that introverted sensation was something you were quite aware of. It's interesting you wanted to be a therapist. You wanted to be in a role where you're sort of more physically healing people or even mentally healing people. Hmm. And having that sort of more palliative approach in a, in a role or career. I think at the same time, extroverted ethics was something which you often struggled with. You've often not entirely known how to actually create for yourself. And it's yeah, more yeah. than you wanted to outsource to other people to be able to provide you to help you feel more accepted and warmly welcomed into some sort of community or group. It wasn't you going out and trying out different reactions and people to try and shape them to create the right sort of effects you wanted to have. So it wasn't it did it sound far more like a suggestive function rather than a mobilizing function. Whereas introvert sensation sounded more to me like something which you're aware when you're comfortable, when you're not comfortable, how to uh, when things are getting a bit too much in certain environments, when you had to avoid those situations. That sensitivity to introvert sensation was there rather than you say going on and doing lots of different things and sort of burning yourself out or um, you know not paying enough attention to your day-to-day -day needs and needing that to be reminded for you, needing that to be brought back in touch with your day-to-day -day and your bodily needs. So it was definitely yeah. cool. Go on, go on. No, no, go on. Um, like the burnout thing, um, it was almost like I almost hit the limit. Mm. I, um, I tried to focus on that, that I don't fo um, like go after the limit that um, when I'm actually burning out that I'm dependable on other people that they kind of help me like even professionals who would um, earn their money because they would help people who burned out but um, I still didn't want to like um, I wanted to keep at least uh, this uh, thing going that I care about this need of myself that I won't burn myself out yeah like it was really just this level. And then sometimes I was wondering, okay, how can I improve my physical needs? Like not um, improve, but yeah, improve my approach to my physical needs. That was just sometimes when I didn't know what to do with my time um, coming up mm. in my head, <laughs> like <Yeah>. now. <laughs> it does sound to me, therefore, that it's not that interest station is strong, it's that it's on the roadmap of sort of the growth and development, you'll hit the introverted sensation first before you reach the extroverted ethics. And that developing your introverted oh, yeah. is more within your remit than in terms of extroverted ethics. Um, yeah, exactly. That's a good way to see, yeah, when, when we see it as a road and what I would approach first or like hit first on the road. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, now, um, yeah, exactly. And as regards, the other way, good way of telling apart mirrors is looking at introverted intuition and extroverted logic. And I think that we see a lot more of the introverted logic for you than the extroverted logic. You're oh, going true. into a more pure academic field rather than thinking so much of how it can then be applied in terms of more of a practical um, sort of way. Um, and there's a certain, well, the normal sort of real, the approach to really doing things very carefully and getting the right clarity and, and precision in what concepts are, how they are then conveyed, etc. shows a lot of the introverted logic, but not necessarily extroverted logic in terms of how it's then used, how readily understandable it is for people to then apply in some sort of way. That doesn't seem to be the main focus. Introverted intuition, on the other hand, very much about thinking far ahead, seeing where things are going to be going in the long run, seeing school as the way towards university and then, you know, your yeah. long term career. Um, and taking your time really to think things through quite a bit rather than sort of jumping into things and trying things out, uh, which are possible. Yeah. Uh, which, whereas in ILE, their extrovert intuition is far stronger than their 
we're not strong with it. True. It's far, more, far more pronounced because it's their leading function. Then their introverted intuition is more of an ignoring function. So they're actually going to take more of those risks and not actually focus so much about thinking things through uh, before they try something out. Because the thing is, they'd rather explore the possibilities than, you know, risk assess in which an LII can risk assess more. Okay, readily. this is also a pretty strong argument, I think, because I, mm. I care about, like, I, I never can't really jump right into something. I, I am not really spontaneous. I'm not really, uh, I, I <laughs> doesn't feel quite right. <clears throat> okay. Um, fantastic. Um, oh, insert type saying, have you ever doubted your that? I think it's type. And if so, what and why? We, well, I know we discussed it a bit before in terms of what types you might be and you were with this serious as you answered this bit earlier in our video but what were the types again that you considered you might be before lii um i think this like uh, yeah um the battle <laughs> was uh, either i'm eii or iei yeah. um that's what i was considering and sometimes i was like okay like that <laughs> If I just look at the phases that I was going through in, the, in my life where I was considering that I was an extrovert, it was really just that I kind of found new friends and I was noticing, oh, I feel great about, uh, around them. And, you know, like, oh, I noticed that I actually want uh, to be around people. Or like even now in the corona time um, where I noticed, okay, I feel quite isolated right now. I kind of need at least a little bit connection to so, uh, something else. Uh, someone else i don't know yeah. that's why i joined the discord servers again <laughs> because i noticed nah mm. it's kind of i also need connection to other people from time to time and uh, like yeah socializing and um even if i'm not engaging and that's the other part like i'm not caring about engaging uh, uh, more about observing a lot and um yeah uh, that's also showing that i'm actually not an extrovert i guess and um yeah but it was basically eii and ie and yeah just because i was um, insecure about my logicalness yeah mm -hmm. yeah makes sense but we cleared this up and it makes sense now yeah no i mean I, yeah i think so um i think email down facts is pushing the point about his earlier question all i would say is that it isn't the right time and place. I should talk about other YouTubers in different formats than a follow-up session with the client. Yeah, probably. More appropriate that way. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think those are all the questions. And do you have any more questions for me? Because you said you had a list, Steffi. Yeah. Um, um... Oh yeah, um, the only thing that made me a little bit like, mm, okay, I have to say something to this, um, when you said maybe ILE doesn't make quite sense like LII, is mm -hmm. that I still care about applying, like, um, I care about in the end, mm, oh, how do I say it? <sighs> the things that I like to, um, think about a lot and theorize a lot about and so on i in the end i still care that it is apl um, applicable to like whatever you are studying like i definitely care about um applying like how did i wrote it <laughs> um yeah, okay. I wrote the importance to see my system successfully implemented in our society or culture, bringing order, structure, and orientation by solving conditional issues or, yeah, whatever the issues. Yeah. That's I mean, what I definitely care about. I, I, I'm, sh I'm sure that, and indeed most LIIs, if they're putting a lot of effort into devising a, some sort of structural system, they would like it would then applied in some way in some real in some way in the world around them yeah. rather than just being lost and forgotten in some sort of dusty test textbook yeah yeah i think I that's mean... the question i would ask though is 
what are your plans to then develop techniques for your ideas to be put into practice? Okay, yeah, that's the thing, um, because I would rather like other people to uh, uh, implement it than me. I just want to like be in the background and uh, <laughs> yeah. setting it up. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I find, I know, in comparison to myself, I find that I like coming up with new ideas and structures very much. But I also think if it's not going to be put into some sort of practice, some sort of way, then it's like wasted potential. It needs to, you know, something needs to come out of it, something which it could be put into practice. And I could very easily think about how that could then be put into practice. I find it's more the boring side compared mm -hmm. to the, uh, the actual theorizing and putting that sort of stuff together from the very beginning. But I, I'm definitely far more willing and able to go into that, to take the discussion to the practical side. So I think mm -hmm. I would, only then can I then think, you know, does it actually work? has actually done something which has led to some sort of change and mm -hmm. then i can think okay if and, and if uh, if it does then i think okay now there's more stuff to look at and more stuff to theorize more more ideas to put together so i think it becomes more of a continuous basis i find for lii's they're far more willing to oh. set out their ideas and let others do more of the implementation mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah you know um I, as you said that you care about um that the potential of it comes yeah. out and so on um for me it's just like um a bazaar is it the right way to say it and um bazaar, i yes. have yes and i have many plates of like yeah i um built on this th theory and this theory and you can decide for yourself if it's um uh like important to impl uh, implement in society or not you know like if mm. you actually see um if it helps you, great, you can have the plate. And yeah. Yes. And that's it. For me, it's like if I've come up with these ideas, I want to see them doing things. I want to sort of push them a little bit in the direction of actually being implemented. And I feel that for an LIR, which doesn't have extra sensation, as a, as a, except as a vulnerable function, they're less going to be about, I'm going to go and actually implement this to some degree. Whereas for me, as a role function, I think. Well, the best way for this extra for this possibility to, you know, to open up new possibilities is to actually put into some sort of practice. So now I can see the different oh, yeah. there. Right, I I wouldn't be so comfortable waiting around for my idea just to be picked up by the person with the right mindset. I mean, I'm I'm really like I really have to say I'm really subtle. Like, um, I wouldn't like. I really have to open my bazaar here and, and not like uh, walking around the city and giving my play to someone, you know, like I want that people approach me, like if they're yeah. really interested, they will approach me and yeah. see if it helps them or not. No, and you... But like with a little, like I, I can't really, I don't know, I, I noticed not much it was rarely that i really wanted to push something like if i really really cared about it like when i really thought mm. the person needs to know this like she needs to know this in order to solve this problem please listen to me now okay that's my cat and <laughs> um <laughs> uh like that's where i noticed that i push a little bit you know like okay yeah but mm. this is really rarely that i noticed this urge and me mm. yeah. i think ILEs are more often front and center drawing attention to their ideas yeah and you can probably do that better than i <laughs> yeah, getting involved to some degree more in the nuts and bolts of making it happen i think mm. they've got the extrovert of ethics there which they really enjoy and then they'll do a little bit of the extrovert of logic because they can and they're mm. more ready and willing to do that um okay let's see anything else hepatia says seeking knowledge for its own sake <laughs> I, I guess yes yes yeah i i would say so too like mm -hmm. it's a good thing to have uh, i sometimes i don't know if it will be usable uh, like usable useful for me or not but at least i get clarity in my head and that's yeah. what i strive for yeah yeah so yeah that's a thing <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. 
Um, email to Anthrax? Sure. Message me on Facebook or on Discord. Very happy. Um, okay. Um, let's see what else is there. No, no other, uh, no other questions. Okay. Any remaining questions for you? Um, I think that was the last point. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, sometimes I need other people. Um, like I, yeah. I don't know how you would um, explain this, but I definitely need. Um, yeah, true. <laughs> um, what I also thought wasn't really lo probably logical type um, is that I need to at least write it down or um, talk to other people to see that I actually build a structure. For me, it makes so much sense in my head, kinda, that I just noticed that I actually structured whatever I did um, to other people if I really didn't um, care about the subject myself that I read a lot it, uh, about it you know like if people just um, approached me with a question I didn't yeah, think about a lot and then I noticed oh I actually stru structured that in my head but I kind of need um, to yeah. put it into something like it. even just writing about it helps me a lot and that's why I thought, yeah, okay, the logical types always seem like they always have it in their mind, like that they are always, um, uh, how do you say it? Um, <laughs> think in a robotic way, kind of like they have this thought and they are conscious of it and they know how to implemented in their system, a mental system or so on, then they have this thought, like, in, that's kind of, in my head, it's always like a little bit messy and I have to put some time in, into it to like structure it and you know, like that's how, um, how I noticed how my thought process works. And I thought this is my, this might be not strong TI or TE, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also noticed this might not be true. Like we all just get reactions or like react to something uh, spontaneously yes. or like immediately. And then oh, we have to. I should go very quickly. Just open the door. I'm just right back. <laughs> yep. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. I would say that, well, a few things to say to that. Mm -hmm. From my experience of SCIs, they're the ones that need to find it far easier to learn and make sense of things by talk, talking it out with others, mm -hmm. learning by socializing, as it were. I don't really expect the same from, say, an LII or an ILE. I think for them, it's easier for them to learn and make sense of things by just thinking it through. But at the same time, I wouldn't say that an LII or an ILE have entirely clear thought processes. Yeah, they're that's what I mean. Hmm. They're, they have extrovert intuition. They're considering a lots of different possibilities. Yeah. People like then taking these possibilities and sort of piecing different parts together, seeing if this fits through or maybe it fits through in this, con this combination or that combination. Yeah. It's more like puzzle sorting. Whereas I think the I would imagine with a very sort of clear, more linear process, it's something you've seen, you've seen something like an, S, an LSI, where they oh, don't yes. have extrovert intuition, it's extrovert sensation. I think these are the clearest types. I think SLE also can set, well, at least in their heads, things come for more of that sort of straightforward, black and white way of thinking. I think my boyfriend is an SLI. At least I showed him um, your type description, and he was like, "Oh yeah, that's totally me." Mm. And um, and he has always such clear thoughts. He said to me like, and I was like, "You know, mm -hmm. no, sometimes it's pretty messy because I seek this, like I draw this connection and disconnection and so on, you know." Mm. And he was like, "What the fuck? Why? Why do you do this?" <laughs> like, <laughs> since, uh, yeah. But, you know, I, I think it's the LSIs and SLIs, uh, the ones with low extrovert intuition, which are more yeah. likely to be more straightforward in their thinking. LSI, perhaps the most linear. Uh, 
Yeah. But that was that's, what I imagined would be the case. Um, I haven't properly tested that yet, but I think that's what makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. In which case, was, was anything else to ask or? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'm, I'm also pretty confident now. Like yeah. it was definitely important to me to um, talk about my school experience that I noticed that like I thought I'm not logical or I'm not good at it and so on. That was something that was quite like the motive of considering ethical types. But yeah, and then I noticed uh, <laughs> I I don't know how to interpret emotional atmospheres at all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. In which case, Steffi, thank you so much for agreeing to appear on this follow-up session and answer some questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. And thank you for everyone in the audience for offering your questions to Steffi. So <laughs> I hope you have a lovely rest of your evening and wish you a wonderful weekend. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.